All right, welcome back. Section 12, listing agreements. You've just learned about agency and agency relationships. And a lot of time whenever I teach agency and listing agreements and how some of these next chapters all revolve around the different relationships we have in real estate. Remember that whole mother, daughter, brother thing. Um, This is one of the first dives into the meats and bones of some of those actual relationships. Now, when I teach agency, um, sometimes like as a continuing education class, Um, I related a lot to relationships, like real life relationships, dating, courting, getting married, getting engaged. So if you can imagine all of our random relationships every single day, if I meet a guy at the gas station, if we're just chatting on the front porch about how great the weather is, those are relationships. Um, that we can have with with anybody. In real estate, though, our relationships get a little bit more tricky because, again, we have to remember what our role is in those relationships. So what a listing agreement really is, is a relationship between a seller and the broker that they are hiring to work on their behalf. And remember, we've discussed that all the agents work under and as a part of the broker. So a listing agreement, if you will, is almost a relationship contract. We call them listing agreements or agency agreements, but they're kind of relationship contracts. So what are those relationship contracts all about and what's the reason for them? Well, first off, most states require that in order for a broker to be able to advertise a property for sale, they have to have written authority from the from the owner, from the seller. So why not have that in the agreement? That's one of the requirements. We also have authority to advertise it under which terms. I can't just randomly decide I'm going to sell a seller's house for, they have to give me a price. So there's certain requirements for those listing agreements. And there's also different types of listing agreements we can have. And just like the different types of ownerships we can experience, we have to think of what is the purpose of this listing agreement? What am I trying to accomplish? Which one would I want to go into with the seller specifically? And then for your purposes getting started, to know the difference between the different listing agreements and what the repercussions of signing them are. So, let's get going. First off, we're, your chapter is going to take a little bit deeper look at agency laws in general, a little bit closer look at some of those relationships, like your scope of authority when you're actually working with a seller in that seller-broker-agent relationship. We're also going to look a little bit more at contract law. The difference between a unilateral, one-sided contract, a bilateral contract, which is two promises in exchange for actions between two different people and promise for promise. We're also going to look at whether or not certain listing agreements could be assignable to other parties because remember we talked about assignment, picking up all of my rights and obligations in an agreement and give it to someone else. Um, Listing agreements typically aren't a signable because again that's a relationship agreement between the seller and the broker. That seller isn't going to want that broker to pick up all of his authority and responsibilities and just hand it off to another broker without his permission. So these are bilateral relationship agreements and we lay those out in the forms of listings. So let's talk about the different types of listing agreements. The ones that you're going to review, you're going to hear exclusive right to sell. You'll hear exclusive agency. You'll also hear open listing. You'll hear net listing, but that's something a little bit different. We'll get to it in a second. So usually we like to use exclusive right to sell listing agreements because it's one broker, one company that has the authority to sell that property. Um, All of the listing agreements basically have the same function as giving you the ability to list a property for sale on behalf of the owner. But one of the nuances that you really need to be on the lookout for and make sure you remember is exactly how am I going to know I'm going to get paid if this property sells. So imagine I get a listing, I put my sign in the front yard, I'm offering this property for sale and as soon as I put the sign up, the next door neighbor's granddaughter knocks on my door and says, hey, I saw your sign in the front yard. I really want to buy your house from you. And the seller negotiates directly with the granddaughter of the owner. Is the real estate agent who has her sign in the front yard going to get a commission? 
Maybe not. It depends on the type of listing agreement. So remember I said that we usually like exclusive right to sell listings because the exclusive right to sell, no matter who sells the property, the agent that's advertising it is still going to receive a commission because the thought process is everybody only knows that house is for sale because of my efforts to advertise it. So make sure that you're remembering the different types of listing agreements, how your level of authority is in each of those, and making sure that you remember um, which parties could receive a commission. Whenever you're looking at open listings, sometimes we call that just sign rights. Um, it's a common practice sometimes even in commercial properties where the seller says, I'm really not even trying very hard to sell, but sure, if you could sell it, you could get a commission. And they'll put a big sign up on a property, and if a buyer is procured through that agent's efforts and they sell the property, they would get a commission. But the seller is still free to sell to somebody on his own and not be obligated to pay a commission to the agent. So again, a lot of people don't realize that there's even different breakups like that, but make sure that you're paying attention to the different types of relationships and who is obligated to who and what your level of authority is. We're also going to talk a little bit more about different types of agency in, in general, whether you're a special agent, a universal agent of the party that you're working with and with listing agreements, exactly how far your authority goes in your interactions with that seller client is really important to take note of because remember this is a relationship relationship business and these chapters are starting to dig apart exactly what our boundary and responsibility is in those relationships that we're in every day. Um, how do we fulfill a listing agreement? easy. We sell a property, right? That's our job. We're being paid to procure a buyer and sell a property. So the fulfillment of a, con of a contract, especially a listing agreement, is that we accomplish the goal that was set out in the original agreement. Your compensation is all included and laid out in great detail in your listing agreements. And also remember that the contract is always directly between the seller and the broker and any other affiliated licensees working on that brokerage's behalf. Also, you're going to talk about whether or not a listing can be canceled. What if that seller decides he doesn't think he's getting good enough service from the broker that has the property listed? If the contracts lay out what our duties are, if we don't fulfill those duties, the seller can actually cancel that agreement. Sometimes the brokerage will fire a seller. We had a seller recently that we actually had to fire and cancel his agreement because they weren't working with us us on showings. So what's the purpose of having the property advertised if the seller's not doing his part and actually not trying to be motivated enough to sell that property? So your chapter is also going to break down how you can and cannot terminate or revoke a listing agreement. So again, make your bullet points. Make sure that you're aware of the different terms and conditions under each separate section and enjoy your next learning section on listing agreements.